Hello there dudes, hopefully you've watched the first tutorial and now you're ready to start learning 3D games and graphics programming. Now when we use OpenGL to program games, we use the programming language C++. Don't worry if you're not familiar with C++ because I'll be explaining it line by line as we go along. So that basically means scattered throughout our own code, we'll have various function calls to OpenGL as and when we need them. Therefore, the very first thing we need to do is create our first C++ test program and to do that, we need a compiler. But very quickly, let's ask ourselves, what is a compiler? Or to be more precise, an IDE, which stands for Integrated Development Environment. A compiler is essentially just a tool which converts our C++ source code, which is high level, into machine code, which is low level, and it's that low level machine code which exists as an executable file, which we double click on to make our program run. For example, in C++, we can write int number equals 5, where int stands for the integer data type, which means we're assigning the value 5 to the variable name number that we've just declared, or string name equals Gary, where string is an object type that contains the characters of my own name. And then after it becomes compiled, it's all just zeros and ones, which we can't understand, but the computer can. So now we know what a compiler is, we need to install one. Now, you don't have to use the same compiler as me, but if you do, it will make it easier to follow along as we get to installing different libraries and things because all the settings that you'll be changing will be identical to the steps that I show you. So I'm going to type into Google Visual Studio Community Edition and as of today's date, which is the 23rd of the 4th, 2024, the latest version is the 2022 edition. I've actually just done installed Visual Studio from my own computer and therefore all my chosen extensions along with it. So each time I put one of the extensions back on, I'll show you exactly what to do. The first thing that downloads is the installer. And then once we're on the workload screen, we need to select desktop development with C++ and then click install. Downloading Visual Studio takes about 10 to 15 minutes on my computer. So I'll fast forward it until it's finished. We can either sign in, create an account or choose skip. And so for now, I'm going to choose skip and then select a color theme. And once we've done that, we are faced with the get started window. And now we need to select create a new project. We're going to be starting from scratch and we'll be manually downloading any files and libraries that we need as we go along. So wouldn't it be useful if there was a starting from scratch option, which there is, and it's this one just here, empty project, which as you can see, start from scratch with C++ for Windows. So let's select it and click next. And now we have to decide on a name for the project and the solution. Now, before we do anything else, you might want to change the folder where your project is going to live. But what is a solution anyway? It's simply a container for one or more projects. And by project, I just mean any program that we're creating, such as our first test program that we're about to create now. And then as we progress, we'll be creating a new project for each tutorial. And so because I never add more than one project to a solution, I like to give them the same name. But for the project name, I always leave project added to the end. And for the solution name, I always add solution to the end. Because that way, even at a glance, I can easily identify the solution folder and the project folder inside it. So let's click on create. We can just close the what's new window. And now we have our very first project, which is empty. And so it doesn't yet contain any files. I really dislike the solution explorer window being over on the right. So I'm going to move it over to the left. I just want to show you where my solution folder has been created. And then when we look inside, we can see the project folder. And then likewise, also notice how in the solution explorer window, we've got the name of the solution just here which is at the parent level to the project itself. I thought I'd selected dark theme, but it's not dark. So let's go into tools, options, and then within environment, general, visual experience, we have color theme. And so we can set it to dark just here. And try not to feel overwhelmed by all the menu options and settings that there are, because honestly, you'll only need to understand a tiny fraction of what this IDE is capable of. And I'm going to be showing you every step as we go along anyway. So now we're ready to create our very first C++ file, which we do by right clicking on source files, selecting add new item, and then let's select show all templates, just so we get to see all the file types available. 
select C++ file and then click on add. I like a line of space before my code starts, so I'm going to press enter. And now we're ready for a bit of speed typing, so let's get tapping those keys. Now it's well worth you trying to get this test program up and running yourself before we get stuck into OpenGL. When it runs, it should display a message in the console window that requests a value from the user and then it should use that value as a counter. But first, let's understand how the program works exactly. So C++ has lots of built-in functionality that we can use, but to do so, we need to copy and paste whatever functionality we want to use to the top of our CPP file so that the rest of the program can see it. However, instead of literally copying and pasting, we just need to use the include directive, which will add the code to our page for us in such a way that we don't have to see it taking up space other than the include line itself. Therefore, we need to include the string library, which will allow us to create a text message and also the input output stream so that we can output the text message to the console window in C++, we always start with the main function. And now to quote Microsoft, the main function serves as the starting point for program execution. In other words, when we double click on our exe file to run the program, it will begin running from the main function. The int to the left of the function name, main, means that the main function is expected to return a value to the operating system when our program exits to indicate whether there have been any problems or other conditions, but we'll assume everything is fine, in which case the tradition is to return zero. This is the first line of our program inside the main function, but if you'd prefer not to see std colon colon all over the place, you can just add this line before the main function, like so. Now we don't need to worry about what a namespace is, but it's basically just a way of grouping functionality together. For example, std, which stands for standard library, which is a group also known as a declarative region, contains functions and other data that we can use. And you can even create your own namespaces. So maybe we'll do that in a later tutorial. Anyway, adding backslash n simply starts a new line and we need to always add a semicolon to the end of a statement. Next, we declare an integer and set it to zero. These next two lines are part of the input output stream that we've just included just here. C out stands for character output. And so we're outputting this message to the console window. C in stands for character input. And so we're asking the user to enter a value into the console window. And then we assign that value to our counter variable just here. The only thing left that we haven't covered yet is the for loop. A for loop just executes the code between the curly braces a given number of times depending on some condition and that's it. For example, this is the for loop header which consists of three parts and is the middle part which is the condition. So the body is going to run repeatedly as long as the value of x is less than or equal to the value of count. The first part is where we declare x and the last part is where we increase x and that's it. Now we need to compile the program so we can either select build solution from the build menu or we can press control B. And then within our solution folder, if we open the x64 folder, we should see the debug folder. And if we open that, we should see the exe and there it is. So let's run that to see if it works. I'm going to enter a value and hit enter. And there we go. So hopefully that's giving you a feel for what it takes to write a program in C++. And in the next tutorial, we're going to start playing with OpenGL. Cheers, and I'll see you there.